Hello there. Things are not looking good for Scotland's former First Minister and ex-leader of the SNP, Nicola Sturgeon, are they? Oh, and not so good for the SNP in general, either. There is now fear among the SNP ranks that Operation Branch Form, Police Scotland's investigation into the SNP finances, could well end up with charges being brought against party officials, including the former party leader Nicola Sturgeon, reports The Times. And this comes after Police Scotland saying that the investigation had now widened from investigating the ring-fenced 600 grand to now also cover the possibility of misuse of funds and embezzlement. And the current SNP leader, Humza Yousaf, has come out and said that Sturgeon's party membership would be reviewed if charges were brought against her. All sounds very interesting, doesn't it? But it just doesn't stop there. We now hear from the Scottish Express that cold case homicide police are now investigating Nicola Sturgeon over the health emergency care home deaths. Scotland's crack cold case unit is involved in the investigation into claims that Nicola Sturgeon and Jeanne Freeman broke the law and were responsible for avoidable deaths, said the report. And it goes on to say that the campaigner leading on this, former nurse Leslie Roberts, has submitted what the police is saying is a vast quantity of evidence, something that took her four months to compile, which has now been added to the Operation COPA investigation into pandemic care home deaths. And in another sign that Sturgeon's Midas touch has turned somewhat sour is that according to The Bookseller, the firm that publishes collections of her speeches, Sandstone Press, has gone kaput. Question, would those speeches be classed as fiction or non-fiction? And I wouldn't have thought there'd be much demand for that sort of stuff. A lost leader, perhaps? Or a lost leader, maybe, as Scotland seems a bit bereft of a true one at present. And one suspects people are getting restless over how long the branch form investigation is taking and that the message is now percolating through to the Scottish constabulary. Because the outgoing Police Scotland Chief Constable felt forced to defend the investigation, saying it was being conducted carefully and proportionately. Investigations into the finances of an organisation, the finances of an individual, are often complex. Investigations around fraud or investigations around potential embezzlement or investigations around the misuse of funds take time, he said. Adding that we've done the right thing, the rule of law and the interests of justice must prevail. Sounds to me like a right can of worms has been opened up, and that's just with Operation Branch Form. And according to the Times, the SNP is riven from top to bottom with infighting, with its once cast-iron discipline shredded. And then out of left field comes the new SNP leader and First Minister of Scotland, Humza Useless, with a real vote-draining policy. With The Telegraph reporting that the SNP is planning new laws to ban the sale of houses with gas boilers in a mass transition to electric heating. In other words, net zero on roids. What they're looking at is all properties will have to have an energy performance certificate rating of C or above at certain trigger points, one of which would be when the house is put on the market for sale and considerations are being given to downgrading housing with gas and oil fueled heating to below a C rating, so preventing their sale or renting out unless tens of thousands are spent on putting in a heat pump or similar. And the SNP Green Zero Carbon Buildings Minister Patrick Harvey said his government wants all Scottish housing to reach new energy efficient standards by 2033. And how much will all of this cost? The amount of 33 billion quid is being banded about. And the Scottish Government has put in under 2 billion. So one assumes all the property owners and renters will be forced to fork out oodles of dosh over the next 10 years. Or face owning a worthless, unsaleable house. 
Now, when I hear stuff like this, I just wonder where these people get together and throw challenges and bets about at random between each other. Is it these eco-cop meetings or Davos or C40 cities or maybe Bilderberg? Because all these leaders are definitely trying to outdo each other in how fast they can fleece the masses and force them to buy stuff they neither need nor want, as well as lock them into joyless little 15-minute city zones to keep them out of the countryside. They are all working at breakneck speed to rush us into their control grid. If only they spent as much time and energy on the ordinary stuff, like potholes, actually reforming the NHS and protecting our children from woke educationalists. Now, it's also being reported today that a Foreign Office Minister, Andrew Mitchell, is declining to confirm that the 2030 ban on the sale of new petrol and diesel cars will stay in place, saying that we would have to wait for any announcement on this issue. But he also declined to say the ban would be lifted or extended. As far as I'm concerned, this is pure electioneering in the face of the Uxbridge and South Ryslip by-election backlash to the ULES expansion scheme. A scheme backed by government, or they'd call a halt to it. And remember, it was a Tory government's Department of Transport that brought about all those car-hating changes like cycle lanes and the like, while the population was ordered to stay in their homes during the health emergency. So all I see is a government biding for time, and even if they did delay it for a few years, they'd still have to accelerate again after the next general election in order to catch up with their economy-destroying net-zero plans. And when talking to Times Radio, Andrew Mitchell said that the government has made it absolutely clear under this Prime Minister that we will defend people from rising costs whenever we can. How kind of them to protect us by spending our own money via taxation on protecting us. No wonder they've frozen tax thresholds and fueled inflation to get wages up to put more people into higher tax brackets, or by borrowing the money and forcing the cost of the interest on us, or more likely our grandchildren, via taxation. And he also claimed that the UK is on track to meet its 2050 net zero targets. Net zero money for the masses, more like, as our government hurtles us cluelessly towards national bankruptcy. And remember, our net zero pledge is tied up in both national law and international law under the Brexit Trade and Cooperation Agreement we signed with the EU. So it seems that our government and opposition that's the whole parliamentary uniparty, it has decided to come first in a race we do not need to come first in. A race that will be, for us, a race to the bottom, while a select few milk millions out of us and corporates make billions. And don't think all this will end with net zero. That's just the start. Once they've achieved that, all aspects of our lifestyles will come under scrutiny via the central bank digital currency. And it won't matter which of the main political parties you vote for. Tories, Labour, Lib Dem, SNP, Green. It won't matter. If you vote for them, nothing will change. The glide path to a ruination of control was set years, maybe decades ago. And we no longer have a say unless we are bold enough to vote for something new.